Hi, I'm Tony Giton, a commercial specialist with Bird Barrier. I'm here with Michael Gallion, Vice President of Business Development and Sales with Bird Barrier. And today we are going to do a short subject on eco-friendly bird control and why this is important and the perception of it in the public today. Michael. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good subject to cover. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So people sometimes, you know, we get phone calls, and I'm sure this has happened to you. Like, <laughs> it's why hey, I'm laughing. Is That's this going to hurt I'm the laughing. birds? You know, <laughs> what what are you guys doing? You're hurting the birds, and, and yeah. all this. First off, I'd like to just start off by saying that Bird Barrier is a safe and humane company. Yeah, well, yes. all the products that we provide, all the strategies we provide, yeah. have. The, uh, the backing of the Humane Society. We're the only bird control company that has a link directly from the Humane Society website. So, you know, I chuckle at the beginning of this because <laughs> yeah. it's the degree of which we, we get, um, you know, uh, kind of aggressively uh, in inquired upon <laughs> yeah. about right. what are we doing to the birds? And the, right. the irony is that we, we were very proud of the fact that we, we care about the environment at Bird yeah. Bear. We care about the birds themselves, like what's good for the, you know, the whole world when it comes to birds. We, aren't, we, we don't believe in the strategy to harm birds even aside from any philosophy, right. it's, it's good strategy because the best strategy of solving a, an infestation of birds is to get them to invest something else off yeah. site. Right. And that way they become fixated on a, on a structure that doesn't harm the humans. Great, then we've solved the problem without harming the birds, but actually it's, it's a very good strategy for solving birds. Well, it's a, it's a very good strategy for saving the birds' lives. That's, that's it. You know, because yeah. let's, if we take Paloma here, if we take a typical pigeon, yeah. it's not against the law to trap. And, and we, a lot of people, us included, we know what happens to trap birds a lot, right? A lot of times. But uh, if, we can, if we can create an environment that is not as desirable for Paloma to be on this structure, wherever she is, uh, that bird's going to live to see another day because one of the last things you can do is trap and remove. And we all kind of know, or we think we know what happens to trap pigeons. Right, so there are, there are three main birds that we should mention that Tony just touched on. Pigeons, they are not uh, protected because they're an invasive species. Uh, in other words, in North America, uh, they weren't native to North America. They were brought over by the Europeans they normally uh, are cliff, uh, cliff dwellers, like they actually live on bluffs and cliffs in their natural environment, uh, mostly around the Mediterranean area. Um, but they were brought over and because they have no natural predators, they flourish. They're very adaptive birds. Also, the English sparrow and the European starling. Yes. Those are all three invasive species that technically with the, anyone can get rid of the eggs. Mm -hmm. They can actually euthanize these birds after they trap them mm -hmm. with no legal ramifications. And the government, as part of the Migratory Bird Act, is to keep balance in, in the way things work, to not let an invasive species overrun the natural species, you know, to right. keep things in balance. But even in that situation, right. um, we don't advocate harming the birds because relocating them is better. Now, yeah. I should mention, you know, in terms of, of bird release, uh, you, you kind of touched on it, the birds are gonna come back if we just release them. Right. So we're not, we're just, you know, it's like standing in, in a flood <laughs> and taking a bucket of water and just pouring it to your left and back into the water. That, right. That's all that's going to happen right. if you release trapped birds. So we, we recommend that those birds, if you trap them out, resident birds that are, that are not protected, hand them off to the Humane Society. Right. That's the best strategy. The Humane Society was created for this very issue to protect and, and offer humane solutions. Uh, you know, there are a lot of pets, the cats mm -hmm. that, you know, are feral and, you know, they have yeah. to, you know, 
to, to mi minimize the amount that they have to euthanize, there's control issues that come into play, but let, let the Humane Society be in charge of that part of it. They are right. the ones that specialize in it, just as we specialize in birds. Right? Yeah, right, right. That, no, that's, that's good. That's good information then. We're gonna talk a little bit about eco-friendly. What does that mean exactly, Michael? Well, eco-friendly is, is kind of like sort of this term that can be misinterpreted with like food, organic yeah. foods. What does that mean? Well, technically, <laughs> right. technically organic like food, like right? that. there are supposed to be laws in place and yeah. we carefully restrict the way things are process without any kind of like pesticides and in, yeah. in the production of that food. Well, eco-friendly is just basically that whatever, whatever tools or materials, especially chemicals that are used to solve problems, especially when it comes to the world of pest control, which technically bird control is an offshoot of pest control, then that those residues that are left behind do not cause any toxicity into the environment in any way, cause any other creatures to die as a result of mm -hmm. what you're doing, and that the, the materials are sustainable. They're not going to, um, they're, they're able to be, um, you know, recycled in some way, if, mm -hmm. if at all possible, or they don't, you know, cause any kind of problem uh, for the future. Uh, right of the earth, you know, and it's, it's so, wow, it's such a broad term, eco-friendly. Right. So what can you do to, you well, what's, know, what's a good minimize? example of a, of a product that is okay. a lot of times overlooked as being eco-friendly and maybe an example of one that's not. Or, right, but there, yeah. it's not that it would be over, overlooked as eco-friendly, it's just maybe assume that this product it, exactly. it is, yeah. is going to not hurt the environment because it's approved for use, right? right. So there, back in you know, the days of different types of uh, gels that yeah. could be used on ledges, we put this sort of clear gel up yeah. on a ledge. Well, it's an oil-based product. Mm -hmm. And then if we're putting oil-based products like into the ground water, into the earth, or back into the world, those the they contain polybutene, which is mm. you know uh, a chemical that doesn't break down, and it's going to stay in landfills just like water bottles that are and right. you know dumped in in and they're going to last for hundreds and hundreds of years and be there for future generations. So that's an example of one that people innocently use. It's not very effective as a tool anyway, right. but um, what, what happens, and then the worst part is then more serious um, chemicals are needed to clean that material up in the future right. when it stops working. You know? right. So that's an example uh, that I know of. Um, and you know. another one that comes to mind is like when you're at a job site, and a lot of times what we'll do at a job site is we, we have to do the cleaning first. Right, we have to clean it, and we do have cleaning solutions. Sometimes we get questions regarding the um, the, the safety of these cleaning solutions. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, and it's it's funny. It brings up a funny story. I mean, it's yeah. not really funny. It's just shocking um, yeah. when I found out about this. But I was in Central America, for example, uh, right. doing training down there, and I I was trying to tell them the importance of using proper chemicals. That first of all are best solutions for right. like cleaning up bird droppings. A lot of big part of bird control is the cleanup. Yeah. I mean, most people in general are okay with birds, they just don't like all the droppings. Right. So cleanup in and of itself is what bird control is all about, right? right? And so I told them, you know, I trained them about the importance of pheromone imprint and to use uh, cleaning solutions that are, are good for the environment but work very effectively. Well, but well, I, let me interrupt you there. Yeah. You, you said pheromone imprint. Talk a little bit about okay. that to our, our, our guests. Yeah, so, so there are different species of birds, but like we see the pigeon here in front of us is an example of a bird that is, is using the, the pheromone imprint that's left behind in their droppings and their feather residue to indicate their uh, residency on a particular structure right. and this is what helps give them a, a unique hold on a structure 
and we put bird spikes over pheromone imprint that's already there. In other words, we don't clean the droppings. Mm -hmm. We put bird, bird spikes in. The bird is still drawn to that spot, right. unique to their family. Right. Right. And so that, that part of the strategy of bird control is to safely, without harming the environment, right. use a cleaning solution like what we have is Dissolve It. It's the right. most common one. It's a product that Bird Barrier carries. And it after uh, it does its job, which it contains an active enzyme that actually uh, will attack, the bacteria will attack particulars about the bird droppings. Mm -hmm. And all of that residue, once it's mixed down with water and the Dissolve It solution, breaks down completely. It's biodegradable right. and it will not harm the environment. Right? Yeah, that's so when that's example. washed away, when you clean that and wash it away and it ends up in a, in a street rain gutter or whatever, when it goes into the rain gutter, this is not considered a safe product. It's not going to harm the environment right. whatsoever. Right. It's, it's important it's, to know. Yeah. It's a, there's a term called GRAS, G-R-A-S, it's an acronym for generally regarded as safe. Yeah. And there are products like, um, like for example, I've got this optical gel, we'll talk about this in a minute, but it's exempt from registration because it does not contain anything harmful to the environment. It's not gonna harm people, it's 100% natural. Right. And these are the things that customers in the world is asking for now. Right. But to get back to the, the, the story I was gonna mention, right. uh, what there, when, I, when I asked in Central America some of the uh, pest operators down there, what they use to clean up bird droppings, they told me gasoline was a common <laughs> practice. It's readily available, yeah. go down to the gas station, but it does a heck of a number on cleaning up bird droppings. Well, yeah. there's nothing but danger and damage to the environment. Right. I mean, here in California, right. where we are, we actually have vapor collectors on our gas pumps right. to redirect the fumes because right. even the fumes are bad for the environment. You imagine yeah. pouring gasoline oh, all over bird droppings and then oh, to Lord. think of the fire risk. And I, yeah. I yeah. was just shocked. No, oh, they have a whole protocol. They use soap and water afterwards. And I thought, oh my yeah. God, this is shocking to think of that. So yeah. um, that's not common, obviously, but there are chemicals that we have to use in order to clean up and we should be conscious. So bird barriers, you know, to dissolve it as a cleaning solution is, is a good example of the yeah. right thing to use. So one of the things that comes to mind is um, that's always been considered like a chemical to the, to the unknown, to the person that doesn't know, is methylanthranolate. You want to speak a little bit about that? This is, in my opinion, a very effective taste and smell deterrent, but it is, as you know. Yeah, it's a grape seed extract. Right. Right. So, and for some reason, you know, the... The grape seed extract, you know, the natural components of that, citric, right? Mm -hmm. So it's acidic. I, I'm, I, I'm not sure, though, exactly why. Do you know why it is? Well, uh, it, it, it affects, I know what it does to the bird. I'm not, uh, I, I don't know exactly what it is in, 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 the, in the makeup of it that's affecting it, but it does affect the trigeminal nerve area, the membranes around the eyes, and when it's ingested, and it's, it's been, you know, consumed, it makes birds feel nauseous. Right. The idea behind it is that wherever you spray this, it's typically used a lot for geese on grass and that sort of thing. When you spray it and the geese go over there and they eat it, they'll associate with that area with being sick, with being nauseous. Yeah. It doesn't hurt them, doesn't maim them, doesn't kill them. It just makes them think twice about going back to that restaurant. Right. There, there, are, there are two other uh, chemicals that yeah. um, that are natural that that yeah. also work in the same way. One is citronella. Yeah. And peppermint. Peppermint oil. Both yeah. of those. Both of those, for some reason, yeah. cause birds to feel nauseous. Although scientists study and it, there's no harm to it, yeah. so it's just triggering some kind of misfire in their nervous system, but it's a great deterrent yeah. without harming them, right? right. And, and we think about peppermint, citronella, and then grapeseed, these are all natural. They're not yeah. gonna, they're, you know, they're part of yeah. the natural ecosystem, right? So those yeah. aren't gonna harm. Now, one of the things that's used in bird control um, 
are some of the products out there that actually control, contain toxins. Mm. Um, that the idea is when you have infesting birds that you're going to give them uh, a regular source of food, mm. okay? Uh, usually oh. cracked corn, you know, right. something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So the birds that are infesting an area, now we attract them to a food source, right. which if we can get them to be completely dependent on the food source, mm -hmm. then a toxin is, is placed in the food itself. Mm -hmm. You set it out one day, mm -hmm. all of the birds are, you know, they just have no clue. Right. They can't smell it. And it's completely and legal. Completely legal in yeah. well, but in certain states. There yeah. Are you have to you states, have to be licensed right. to, to use this product. So you have to have a pest control license because mm -hmm. that is a right. registered product. Mm -hmm. It's not GRAS. Yeah. It is it is not exempt from registration. And the the problems with that is, you know. There are a lot of things that can go wrong, and all you have to do is go and look look up on YouTube, and you'll see examples of overdosing the birds, sometimes kill, yeah. killing the bird. Birds yeah. will die, right? And then the worst case scenario is there could be non-target species that come in. Yeah, they actually could um, other creatures could that are eat protected. The dead. That yeah, are protected. they're protected. Right, but right. They, then this toxicity can spread outward, and it's just. Generally, uh, the the view is it's 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 really looked down upon by most people today yeah. compared to the way it was even ten years ago, and the the awareness of you know the the waning populations of birds in North America are putting more pressure yeah. that whatever you do don't harm the birds, and in general people just don't want to see birds harmed. Yeah, I'm proud I'm proud to work for a company that is completely safe and humane. Um, looks into every product that's uh, that we sell, and is, and we can assure you that uh, these products are here. They're safe for birds, and they do not harm birds, and they are accepted by the Humane Society. Now there are other deterrents yeah. that we use, you know, besides these natural things that we mentioned: grapeseed extract, for, yeah. for example, methyl and threnolate, and right. we have the product Avian Forest that contains that. Um, but there are devices like bird spikes. Mm -hmm. We have bird spikes that are called Dura Spike that are stainless steel. Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously those are gonna be around a long, long time. But the point is that those go on structures and when mounted properly, they're not gonna come loose. They're not gonna end up in the groundwater. It's all part of the actual right. built structure. So it's a structural modification that will never be placed in a natural setting right. like out in, out in right. nature. So right. we want to make that clarification. And then, you know, all the other products that we have, um, eventually uh, they are part of the structure. They just become part right. of the structure and uh, there's no need to recycle anything. They just become a permanent part. So there, there aren't too many things in bird control when we compare it to pest control. Right. with how many things can go wrong. Right. Right. And any other devices that that you know that we have in our line that could possibly uh, cause any kind of, uh, you know, not necessarily be eco-friendly. I mean, right. I, I, otherwise, I mean, I can't even think of anything else that. No. And if you have questions out there and you're concerned with, you know, the makeup of a cleaning solution or what's in our optical gel or what's in the, uh, our TR dispensers that contain uh, methylamphenolate. We do have all that technical data. We do have the labels and the MSDSs that we can send you. We're happy to do so. Uh, I think you'll find that everything falls underneath the humane and safe category. Yeah, now very, a very safe product. Tony just touched on this one. We should yeah. go ahead and talk about this now. This, this is a disc called optical gel. Here in, in the US, the rest of the world, optical gel. Uh, up in Canada, it's known as Optica. And basically what this product is, it's an amazing product in that it's very effective, but it's 100% natural. And what yeah. it is, is primarily made of beeswax as the main substrate. Seaweed extract called agar is mm. added to give it a uh, density that holds up in, in the heat. Mm -hmm. That 
combination of substrate is a great reflector of UV light, which is a trigger for birds, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of like what we talked about with peppermint, citronella. These things um, do not harm the bird, but definitely cause yeah. a reaction. Mm -hmm. So that citronella and peppermint oil are mm -hmm. added for that reason because it causes this sort of reaction. So we have a visual trigger, we have a smell trigger, we have another smell trigger in that we use dissolve it mm -hmm. to break the pheromone imprint that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And then the other part, I'm going to kind of hold this up a little closer to the camera, but it's very sticky. I'm going to take the lid and you can just see there that this is very sticky to the touch. And with it being that sticky, obviously when we put these down, we take the lid off, it's very sticky to the touch. And the birds, if they touch anything sticky, it triggers another flight response because mm -hmm. they, and that's why the gels we talked about earlier came into the market is that just the sticky factor is a great way to help deter birds because yeah. they, they can't get anything sticky on their feathers. Right. It really uh, costs them a lot in terms of their right. own safety. They can't fly away at a moment's notice. They, right. they keep their feathers perfectly preened and, and clean. Yeah. So yeah. that this product here has been a real uh, innovation in bird control. Yeah. It, it solves all the major problems. It can solve nesting, doesn't harm birds, yeah. but strong enough to relocate them somewhere else safely without harming them. And then all this material, if it were to go into the ground, um, it's safe. It all breaks down safely. Yeah. Although beeswax in nature lasts indefinitely. So this product is a long-term solution. It can be up to many, many years, and it is a stable substrate. Beeswax doesn't break down. We could talk about optical gel for hours. <laughs> you know, I mean, we it, really could. So we, if yeah. for the person that's listening out there, <coughs> excuse me, I'm the new guy, this is the number one product that you probably want to look at for any kind of personal problems you might have around your house, but it's also a product that has crossed over into the commercial zones and Mike, talk a little bit about perhaps the, the newest commercial zone that we've entered. With, with well, the, 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 you know, the utility sector, right. in particular power industry, and you would think, well, you know, that's not eco-friendly. Like we're, we're setting up our grid across, mm -hmm. you know, and they're, but, but in reality, it is. In reality, it's, um, they have so many standards they have to adhere to. Mm -hmm. When they build this infrastructure in, there are environmentalists, there are biologists every step of the way yeah. to make sure that we have a clear separation between the utility infrastructure and nature to the best of our ability, yeah. right? But, you know, for example, um, you know, I just heard about yesterday, at, uh, I spoke at an event and there was a lot of talk about the fact that the solar plants that are going in, solar yes. collection plants, are going in all over the southwest United States. And it's all in our attempt to become less dependent on fossil fuels, mm -hmm. which are harming the whole world, causing global warming. All these things are mm -hmm. coming into play. But, but mm -hmm. they want to cut out a swath of the only place in the world where there are Joshua trees growing which is here in Southern California, Joshua Tree right. out there. So in the desert, they've proposed clearing and actually cutting down a bunch of Joshua trees. And the reason why? It's because the area is such prime area for solar collection. Like the, the Oh, yeah. And it's, it's part of the inherent nature of why Joshua trees survive. But here's the irony. Yeah. Here's the irony. As the, as the climate becomes hotter. Like this year, right. we're expected to have this, this dome of heat. We might set the record this year. They're, they're expecting this year that the hottest temperature ever on Earth is going to be recorded out in Death Valley, California, out at Badlands, which are right. uh, Badwater, which is 282 <coughs> feet below sea level. National Weather Service has a thermometer out there, right. and we could go beyond 135 degrees this year. No, the hottest temperature recorded. Well, that's killing the Joshua trees. Right. So it the the, the irony is that we're going to need to cut down a bunch of Joshua trees, do solar collection, 
become less dependent on oil, and then bring the temperature of the earth back down. <laughs> but uh, and but we, these are the kind of things that are, that are always going on, but, but even like the power industry, right, they're getting, you know, the, it'll go through a long process right. before they'll be approved to do this. Right. But it's an example of, you know, the limitations of, you know, human progress going forward without harming the environment at the same time. And it's where nature co coincides with human project, like at these power stations, you know, I mean, if, if, if nature's there and they're undeterred, it can potentially start fires, which can lead to, yep. you know, huge damages, yep. huge eco problems. That's right. And, and so how this all coincides is if you can protect these areas with a product like optical gel, which by the way, is probably one of the easiest products to install, um, and you can prevent fires and things like that, then it is falls yeah. underneath the umbrella of eco-friendly. Yeah, absolutely. This you is know? an absolute truth. We carry this product and we're proud of the fact that this optical gel is probably the basis for the most eco-friendly yeah. bird control you can you could actually offer. So yeah. if you're interested in, in solving birds yourself and doing it in an eco-friendly way, really simple training we have online for this product you can install it yourself. Um, there are some concerns. You, you're going to be, you know, cleaning up bird droppings. Bird droppings are hazmat, mm. so those are bad for the environment too, and they're yeah. bad for humans. So there's yeah. there's a whole balance to it all. We maintain the cleaning solution is eco friendly, the product is eco friendly. Birds are not going to be harmed. This is a great basis for eco-friendly bird control. And if you're new to this and you're doing this type of uh, work, uh, consult with us, call us, use us, 1-800-NO-BIRDS. 1-800-NO-BIRDS. Right? And we're happy to assist you um, with your projects. Yep, so yeah. I think that, that covers it for now. Yeah. Obviously, wherever this is posted, wherever you're watching this, um, you can leave your comments, they'll come right to us, we'll be notified of any questions that you have. And, We'll be glad to answer them. We look forward to helping out again. My name is Michael Gallion. I'm Vice President of Business Development and Sales. I'm Tony Giton, Commercial Sales Manager for Bird Barrier. And I guess this is a wrap. I learned a new word today. What's that? Preen. Preen. You're preening? Preen. You do preen in the morning before yeah, you come? you know, out? I preened my hair today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I cleaned a little, but, but uh, yeah, birds. I, yeah. I don't know why that word is there, but they... Yeah. Yeah, when they take yeah. their beak, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> clean off their feathers. Good, man. So we'll be preened and ready for the next yeah. podcast. Next We're coming time. back next time. All right. Take care.